it's the Sean and Tamara Show. You're watching the Sean and Tamara Show. And thank you very much for joining us today. Um, it's the 1st of September, so pinch and a punch for the first of the month. Um, and this month we're looking at um, peace because it is peace month because we have the International Day of Peace later on uh, in this month. I think it's the 20 21st. 21st. And um, this week we're going to be looking at the traditional security sector because while we don't really – well, we can't not engage because we do work a lot in security and human security. <coughs> excuse me, human security has that aspect of um, sort of looking at uh, small arms and light weapons. And I promise not to make any small arms jokes this time. Um, so it's a lot around engaging in the traditional sort of security sector. And traditional security sector, just to rephrase, is looking at okay. So you have the military the Navy and the police and basically it's that general idea of the traditional ideas of what security is. So um, in our work we do engage sometimes around looking at budgets and around incorporating gender into these kinds of processes because it is a very masculine kind of process. Not to mention um, the fact that you know, you, you want to be able to engage in those spaces in a way that you are integrating human security into the traditional security sector. So um, when we started the Sean and Tamara show, just to look at a little bit of history and a couple, um, a couple episodes ago, <laughs> because we're not really that old, we were born in uh, July, um, we came, the show came out of uh, talks around the uh, Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict, or GPAC, regional uh, sec sec steering, group. Uh, steering group meeting, right. So it was their annual meeting, and we, we were there covering it for Femlink. And so, Tamara, what, what, just, just to refresh, what were some of the things that we did raise in that really long 15-minute episode <laughs> that was a lot of fun to do, but, you know, yeah. sort of an idea of the kind of issues that came out of, you know, uh, traditional security sector in the Pacific? Yeah. Um, well, some of the issues that came out were with uh, young people with weapons and small, arm, uh, small arms weapons, shun, and also how, um, well, actually... Um, I think it was in PNG, um, Helen uh, mentioned a lot how youths, uh, their only way of expression or forming opinions of what they really wanted to let out was through engaging themselves with uh, the use of weapons, which was really worrying. And um, yeah, so, so those were some of the things and also how people were trading small arms, uh, weapons and um, all those stuff. Yeah, which was really um, worrying for the country, especially when they, w they were in this, uh, I think it was during the period of elections, right? Um, yeah, so during the elections, uh, the youths would uh, burn the ballot boxes mm -hmm. and use guns, to, I mean, to basically bribe others into voting for this particular person that had bribed them with money earlier on. Mm -hmm. And uh, she also mentioned, I think, uh, how the women were also p held at gunpoint mm -hmm. at one stage um, because they were not allowed to have uh, a workshop that was regarding peace. And so that was like one of the highlights that she mentioned because these were all women being held at gunpoint by some of the um, gangs at uh, Bougainville. And, but then fortunately they threw their weapons in the sea when these uh, other gangs were, I think they were really busy doing some of their jobs or something. <laughs> they forgot they had left their weapons. Um, yeah, so that was some of the issues that I guess because, um, and you will highlight it in the mm -hmm. next point, of the lack of spaces for dialogue. Uh, because uh, these, um, I guess the youth, th uh, the youth that are now uh, using the weapons as a form of expression, um, they've seen this while growing up because uh, it's been a repetitive cycle in uh, PNG, having yeah. conflict, armed conflict. So I guess if you continue to see something, then later on you will emulate these actions okay. in the near future. And you know, that's worrying. And I, I guess that, like you said, that that's our entire point, that um, you're looking from a country level up, but you know, if you're, if you're looking at the more global scene, when it comes to traditional security sector, that's one of the ways that states interact with each other. It's, it's, it's about flexing of your arms, basically. You know, you're showing off your strength and that, <coughs> that you have in this traditional security sector. And then there's also a, a not necessarily parallel, but, but a, 
you know, the, the thing that runs beside it is the sort of economic ties that people have. And, you know, that's a step closer to engaging properly. But, but you know, like when I say properly, I mean in a way that it's fair to everybody. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not fueled by a sense of fear or a sense of greed or a sense of, of you know, we want the most in, in our country as opposed to, you know. And in the Pacific particularly, we're, we're really vulnerable in that. We don't have that much sort of economic strength to, I, I guess, defend our own interests mm -hmm. because while, you know, in Melanesia we might have quite a lot of natural resources, we don't have the capacity to, yeah. to, to utilize them, let alone, um, you know, the, the way to market it. It's like, oh, you know, the, the, the aid will come in, mm -hmm. but then it'll take everything else out rather than keep the country going. It, it'll self-sustain it. Mm -hmm. so the whole sort of issues around uh, quite a few of the um, sort of aid and everything else. So, you know, you worry about that. And and we are talking in Melanesia and everything, the concern for guns and weapons, because because that idea of dialogue being, a, a you know, a reliable process, because it, it does take a really long time. But the thing is, you do want to be preventative rather than reactionary. You want to make sure that you're preventing conflict and, and they're in GPAC being the prevention of armed conflict. And, and so, you know, that, that's something that we're concerned about. While here in Fiji we may not have as much of a threat of arms as just sort of general... We don't really know, but, you know, um, we, we are glad that it, it is quite... It's much safer than it is in the other parts of the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it still doesn't negate the need for addressing the spaces for dialogue around the prevention of conflict because we do have a cycle of conflict. I mean, we've had quite a few coups and everything else. And we want to stop people from thinking that that's the only way to deal with some sort of issues. Yeah. And like you said, these are in in like PNG and the Solomons. It's the young people with the guns, and it's the young people who have seen that have grown up in places where you know violence and, and armed conflict has been the only way to resolve certain issues. So you you want to address it everywhere, and you know trying to find ways that you can come to a consensus, you can come to an agreement, so that it doesn't sort of break down into having to be in the hands of the traditional security sector. Mm -hmm. Because we are peacemakers and we prefer, you know, not to have small arms involved. <laughs> so no yeah, small no so small arms, no small arm jokes. It's um, it's it's like a memo here, because yeah. it is a very it is a very entertaining phrase, small arms and light weapons, because you do feel like you're discriminating against people who have small arms. Yeah. Anyway, so I guess that's our show for today. That is, um, I'd just like to say something. One last point. Um, well, I guess, like, also for those that would like to come in and keep the conflict or, I mean, like, keep the peace or make yeah. peace, um, I think it would be best if you, like, question, like, why they are y using that form of expression or why mm -hmm. are they using that approach? Because I guess it's um, important to understand the form of behavior, then maybe addressing the issue would also contribute to helping that person and then the country as a whole. So I guess that's what peace really is. Addressing the root causes the root because, causes. you know, problems never go away unless you, like, properly uproot them as opposed to just cut it down. Just cut it down, but then it grows back up and then yeah. that, that's, that's the problem. Yes. So that's it uh, from the Shana and Tamara show and stay tuned because this is the month of peace and we'll be carrying out more tea sets uh, productions regarding peace for this month. Yes, in fact, uh, next week we'll be looking at human security. So it's something that we actually know a lot <laughs> about being, um, because that is Family Pacific sort of focus generally. So, so we're looking forward to that, not to mention we'll also uh, look at um, International Day of Peace messages yes. for the rest of the month. So thank you very much. Uh, this has been the Sean and Tamara Show. We'll be back with more soon.